and welcome to Miss Young's living room. I'm your announcer, Bob Wilson, and I'm very proud to present the star of our show, Miss Loretta Young. Oh, my, it's nice to be back with you again. You see, my husband and I sneaked in a little vacation. And to me, one of the nicest parts of any vacation is the talking about it afterwards. One of the high points of our trip was seeing our beloved friend Rosalind Russell and her smash Broadway success, Wonderful Town. She's the toast of New York, and now I know why. It's because Behind all the glamour and brilliance of her stunning performance, and believe me, it is, there shines that deep and steady glow that is Roz herself. Good, kind, humorous Roz. Oh, my, she wears her success beautifully. Our letter tonight is from a girl named Patsy. Dear Loretta, she writes, one of my girlfriends keeps telling me that I shouldn't let people use me the way they do. She keeps asking me, where is my pride? She says Joe, for instance, is making a fool of me because he doesn't even call up for a date until the very last minute. And that I shouldn't accept him because he'll think I'm just sitting around waiting for him to call, playing eager beaver. <laughs> Personally, Patsy, I, I've never seen anything wrong with being eager. I think it's a very warm and complimentary way to be. However, I think the important phrase in this letter is that Joe is making a fool of me. <laughs> of course, none of us relish that idea. However, let's not jump to conclusions. First, I want you to meet some people, and I want you to notice the man particularly, because I think that he has the right attitude about this. And I'm going to let him tell it in his own words. Well, it was this way. I was just walking along aimlessly, killing time in a strange town. Some of the scenery was first rate. But I had so many worries on my mind that I didn't pay much attention. Then all of a sudden, things began to happen. Tramp, get away? Yes, yes, he got away, but it's all right. Don't worry. There wasn't anything valuable in my bag anyway. Oh, now I find out. Here, let me help you up. You know, next time you better let me do the fighting and you watch, huh? Oh, comedy, that's what I need. Plenty of good comedy. You're hurt. How could you tell? Well, listen, you better come back into my house and rest for a little while. It's right down the road here. Come on, I'll help you. Up you go. Say, uh, don't you want to take your coat off? It's all full of blood and dirt and everything. Uh, it's on the shirt, too. Oh. Uh, okay. Huh? Okay, oh, if yes. I take the shirt. Yeah, sure, take it off. You'll be more comfortable. That little tramp beat you up and got away without a bruise on him. Yeah. You're forgetting one thing. You're forgetting his knuckles. Huh? I'll bet his knuckles are bruised something fierce. I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, yeah, but I don't understand. I mean, you're such a big fellow. I can see I'm not so... going to have a choice. I did a lot of unsupervised weightlifting when I was a high school kid. Oh? It made me muscle-bound. Oh. Uh, muscle-bound men are too slow and clumsy to be any good in the scrap. Is that so? Furthermore, I... Got a glass jaw. Ah. Oh. Gee, it must be embarrassing getting beaten up by smaller men all the time, huh? It is embarrassing. That's why I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do you want to talk about, huh? Well, the shirt and coat. You think there's any chance of getting the blood off them? Oh, I don't know. I think it'll take a professional cleaner to get these stains out. Oh, that makes it nice. 
In an hour, I've got to see a man about a job. Blood all over the clothes ought to make a wonderful impression on him. Your eye is getting black all around there. Every little bit helps. Do you suppose you could arrange a whiskey breath? Well, I think my father usually keeps a bottle in the kitchen. He, he won't mind. I'll come with you. I don't want to be alone by myself. <laughs> oh, come now. It can't be that bad. Surely you have some other clothes to change to. But I haven't. I only arrived in town today, and my suitcase was either lost or stolen on the train. Well, can't you buy yourself a new suit? My traveler's checks were in the suitcase. Oh, if ever a man should have a drink, you should. And right now. There you are. Well, I don't see how things could be any worse. <laughs> Thing, Kay, but imagine how I felt. Oh, Dad, Daddy's coming too. Here, let me help you up. There you go. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but my mother and father came in so quietly, I didn't even know they were there. I want you. Say, what is your name? A uh, Stone, Walter Stone. Oh, well, this is my mother and this is my father. This is Walter Stone. I'm, uh, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Stone. Are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. Never felt better. <laughs> I guess there's still plenty of life in the old boy, isn't there? I must be twice his age, but I knocked him out with a single punch. Oh, Dad, you wouldn't have knocked him out, except he's got a glass jaw. Well, I didn't hit him in the jaw. I hit him in the back of the head. All right, so it's turning out I've got a glass head, too. And I'll be running along now, unless your wife would care to go a few fast rounds. Well, you don't have to be so bitter about it, Mr. Stone. Anyone having the kind of day I've been having is going to right to be bitter. You come right back here and sit down right there and relax. Dad, you're going to want to help this young man when you find out his problem. I just sat there, too numbed even to think, while Kay told her folks my troubles. Then, finally... Mr. Stone? I say, Mr. Stone. Uh-huh. What kind of a job are you after? I'm a newspaper man. <laughs> What's the matter? I can't help it. It sounds so funny. A muscle-bound obituary editor. Oh, mother. <laughs> Do you think I should uh, try another line? A prize fighting, maybe? No. I came here because I understand there's an opening on the local paper. There is? Well, Pat Moore, the publisher's a friend of mine. Oh. I'll tell you what. You march right down there and tell Pat Moore I sent you. He'll give you the job. He's supposed to march right down there looking like that? Dad, you're almost as big as Mr. Stone, and you've got plenty of suits. Oh, see here, young lady. That's I a I... wonderful idea, Kay. You know... I think your gray gabardine would look fine on Mr. Stone. Well, I don't. No, I think the brown tweed is better for him. I will not Stone. lend him a suit. Let's go upstairs and see what we can do. You hear me? I will not lend him a suit. I'll be a little short for you, but other than that, it'll be all right. Oh, rats. <sighs> you look very nice, Walter. Doesn't he, Dad? Oh, Dad. Don't worry. We'll see to it that you get that job. I don't know how to thank you for everything. Ah, that's easy. Just drop by the house tonight after dinner, huh? You want me to call on you? Sure. Oh, I mean, you've already seen the gravy stains on my shining armor. <laughs> Nonsense. I think you're cute. Cute? Mm-hmm. 8.30 then? Okay. Fine. I'll see you later. It didn't make any sense. A beautiful girl like... Kay Coughlin interested in an overgrown slob like me. But that was just the first surprise. The second surprise came after I'd landed the job, eaten a beanery dinner, and returned to Kay Coughlin's home. <laughs> the elephant looked at him and said, Very funny, very funny. <laughs> you must be Walter Stone. Kay's told us all about you. Uh, I didn't know it was a party. Come on in and meet everybody. I'm Stacy Smith. This is Audrey Shaw. How do you do? Hello. Marshall Milliner. Hello, Walter. How do you do? Kenny Bruckner. Hello. Hello. And last but not least at all, Kay's big moment, Paul Bosson. Oh, pleased to meet you, Stone. I want to thank you for rescuing Miss Coughlin this afternoon. Huh? I say I want to thank you for oh, rescuing... Walter. Well, I'm so glad you could come. Uh... Would you like to dance? 
This is my favorite record. <laughs> oh, here, let me put your hat over there. <laughs> uh, well, well, what's all this about uh, my rescuing you? Oh, well, I, it occurred to me that you wouldn't want everyone to know that you were beaten up by a teensy little tramp. A little, so little, little, little tramp. Not teensy, it's, it's bad enough the way it is. Well, so I just changed some of the details when I told them about it. Oh, and, uh... Instead of uh, the tramp knocking me out, I, I knocked him out, is that it? Uh, you knocked them out. Them? There were three of them. Oh. Well, big fellas? Oh, look at the bruises. Mm -hmm. Well, that'll teach another to pick on a defenseless girl. <laughs> oh, ouch. Excuse me. <laughs> That's all right. Um, oh, Walter, there's a beautiful moon outside. Would you like to come out and sit on the porch with me? Oh, what, what about your boyfriend? Won't he object? Well, who cares about him? I do. I've lost enough blood for one day. Say, look, what kind of a coward are you anyway, huh? A bruised, sensible coward. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. I'm muscle bound, sure, but not in the head. What do you mean? You're only making a play for me in order to make your boyfriend jealous. Well, that's ridiculous. He's probably one of these guys who won't get off the dime. You mean to use competition to yank a proposal out of him? <sighs> Preposterous. Is it? No. No, it isn't. But if you mention one word of this to anybody, I'll just... Well, I get my nine-year-old cousin to come out here and beat your brains out. That's what I'll do. I won't say anything. You won't? What's more, I'll... I'll do my best to make him jealous. You will? Uh, you help me get my job. It's only right I should do you a favor in return. Oh, Walter. Oh, Walter. Y you're sweet. It's not so much that I'm sweet. It's just that I don't want to tangle with your nine-year-old cousin. Oh, you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and get her some punch, and then I'll be right back. Next week, Kay and I saw each other almost constantly. We'd heard that her boyfriend, Paul Boston, was getting blue with rage. And I guess that's why she was in such high spirits that Sunday when we went on a picnic with her mother and father. <laughs> don't you ever laugh, Walter, or even smile? When I don't have a split lip, they call me Jolly Wally. When did you last not have a split lip? I don't remember. Must you two always squabble? I'm the only one here he's not afraid of. That's why he's always picking on me. Come on, Napping Boy. Let's see how you can roll a canoe on that lake out there. Remember, those are my slacks you're wearing, so kindly don't drown. I swim like a seal, a dead seal. Come on! You know, you're not fooling anybody, Joe. You're really getting very fond of Walter, aren't you? Nonsense. Though I admit to feeling a little sorry for him. Sorry for him? Why? Because he's let himself become a party to this cold-blooded female scheme to hook Paul Boston into marriage. But you will cooperate tomorrow night. Why, what's tomorrow night? Monday. Oh, you know how Paul Boston always takes it for granted he's going to dine with us on Monday night? Well, this time he's in for a big surprise. Can't we get to the point, isn't it? Well, Walter's coming to dinner, too. He's going to put on a big act for Paul. Pretend he's taken over Paul's place in our lives. Sort of a climax to the jealousy buildup, is that it? Mm. You know something, Edna? What? Laughing boys being awfully cooperative. Almost too cooperative. Monday was D-Day. H hour was on hand, then M minute, and finally S second. Come 
Come in, come in, Paul. Oh, you. We've been expecting you. Make yourself the home. Oh, hi, Kitty. Oh. Hi, Paul. Oh, well, why, why, why don't you sit over here? Thanks. Uh, uh, Mrs. Cogman will have dinner ready for us in a minute. Oh, Won't you, Mother Cogman? Just two shakes. Hello, Paul. Mrs. Cogman. Uh, if you like, uh, Daddy Cogman will uh, mix a drink for you while we're waiting. Dad. Uh, uh, would you like a little something, Paul? No, thanks. I would. Throughout dinner, I entertained the company with a series of colorful lies about my exploits as a reporter. All the while, Kay played up to me for Boston's benefit. By the time coffee was served, his eyes were calling me dirty names. It, it must be wonderful to be in the newspaper game. You meet so many interesting people. Not always. I'd better clear the table. Uh, don't bother with the dishes, Mrs. Cogman. Kay and I'll do them. Oh, I'll help, too. Kay and I always do them alone. You stay here with Daddy Cogman. We won't be very long, Walter. Uh, you got him awful mad. Considering the way you fight, you're the bravest man I know. If he starts any trouble with me, I'll, I'll give him the same treatment I gave those three tramps. Paul was on the boxing team at college. He was? So I, uh, I'm glad you're wearing your own clothes for a change. More coffee? This is kind of fun, isn't it? Oh, doing dishes is always a great sport. <laughs> what I mean is you and I doing the dishes together. Oh. Why don't we do them together every night? I, I don't have an engagement ring with me, but if you say the word why, I'll buy one the first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, of course, Paul. Oh, uh, one more thing, Kay. Would you mind telling that lumbering ox out there that you're my fiancé and that he's to stop hanging around you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him right away. Good. Walter, there's something I have to say to you. Will you please step out on the front porch? Sure thing. down into consideration. I, well, you see, I always thought that I'd be the happiest girl in the world if Paul ever proposed to me, and well, instead I feel as if I'm ready for the poison hemlock. Order two straws. I may join you. Were you kind of hoping I'd fall in love with you? It isn't every day I meet a beautiful girl with a father whose clothes almost fit me. Oh, Walter, you've been just so wonderful about everything. I just feel terrible. Oh, it's my own fault for aiming so high. It's going to happen to you now. Suppose I'll meet a girl of my own sort and we'll... Oh, for heaven's sake, where are you ever going to find a muscle-bound female obituary editor? There just is no such thing. Oh, no, it's a, a bride-to-be is supposed to be happy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Walter. Walter, can you ever forgive me for... well, using you? Of course. Oh. Your fiancé. Oh, Walter. He's watching. What? Slap my face. What? Slap my face, oh, yeah. not too hard. 
Was this Big A for knowing you, Kay? What? What, 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 what if I was? Oh, oh no, boys, boys, please, please. Uh, it's all right, it's all right. I'll let him get away with it this time. Hey, just a minute. I don't think you're as tough as you'd like people to believe. Oh, yeah? Now, yeah. now wait a minute, darling. Please don't fight. You know you're going to get hurt. Don't worry, Kay. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. She wasn't talking to you. She was talking to me. Were you talking to him? Well, uh... Well, were you? Yes. Yes, I was. Wait, wait, you, you, you called him darling. Yes, I did. Let me at him. I feel like I can lick my oh, no. weight and wrap it. Walter, don't! You run out of back. Oh, Walter! Oh, come on. Walter! Come on. Walter, stop! Put back it up, Paul! Stop! Stop it, Paul! Stop! When I came to, Kay was patting my head. Walter? Walter? Ah. Oh. How, how did I do? Oh, you were magnificent. He never even laid a hand on you. Uh, what happened to my jaw? It feels as... Uh, oh. Well, well, it was an accident. I couldn't help it. My elbow, it got in the way. Oh, Walter, can you ever forgive me? Well, that depends. Where, where's your fiancé? Oh, he's gone. Gone forever now. In that case, I forgive you. <laughs> oh, Walter. Look, Edna, he can smile. It's Jolly Wally himself. Darling, will you kiss me again? All right. Uh, be careful of my jaw. Oh, yes. Well, Patsy, see what I mean about Walter. He was no fool. May have looked like one for a little while. But he got the girl. Seriously, though. No one can make a fool of us except ourselves. And always it's false pride. An over-exaggeration of our own importance that makes us behave like fools. Alexander Pope, the witty poet, expressed it this way. Pride is the never-failing vice of fools. Good night. See you next week. Visit Loretta Young again next week, same time, same station.